My name is Sonja Stummerer and I am a designer and an architect. Yeah, and together we are Honey and Bunny. We have very difficult uh, second names and we've lived and worked in Japan for a year. Nobody knew us and they asked us who we are. We said as a joke, as an answer to all these strange names, we are Honey and Bunny. The problem was that people remembered very well and after a while this joke became our name. We are both architects and we are from Vienna and for about 10 years we are into the research of food design. During our studies we did a lot of different design, not only architecture but also small things or industrial design. And once we came up with the idea of designing plates and dishes and then uh, suddenly we asked like who actually designs what is on the plate. started with the proportion of the fish finger. We wanted to research who actually decides if the fish finger is five centimeters long or six and why is it like that? The notion food design uh, refers uh, to all the processes and all the decisions that have to be made uh, when you prepare or develop a food product. What we mean with design is to start a discussion about the food we eat to bring in agricultural topics, for example. Social topics. Yeah. Social topics. The hierarchy at the table, patriarchism. Or tradition. So that's interesting for me, that there's always some community making up the rules to, and deciding right and wrong. So we really want to find this connection between the user and the way it is used and the actual design. We just wanted to buy a book about food design and then we found out that there wasn't anything, there wasn't any publication. So finally we decided to, to do the first one. The first book was successful. This is one of our theses that uh, food products like hot dogs or frozen pizzas or cornflakes, they can be seen as real industrial design products. The much more interesting part for us is the consistency. Think about mozzarella for example, it tastes like tomatoes and basil. Of the legs of frogs. I mean, this is just like, what is it? The taste, this is nothing. But it's a very specific consistency, and that's what we like with this product. 60% of our feelings during eating are coming out of the consistency of the product. So it's what we feel in our mouth. We feel the temperature, we feel the texture, and so on. It's the eat design project. No? On the eat design project, which will focus more on the consumption, on the way that we consume food. That means, for example, tableware, tools we use, furniture we use, clothes we wear. There are so many unwritten rules about uh, the way you consume food and that's something we want to put in question. What we've tried to do was to force people in an eating situation they are not used to. So we've tried to develop a table which is not in that sense a classical table. So we force people standing, sitting on the table and we've served insects and uh, to, to bring people in a new situation. We are currently starting the e-design book and we do write the script for the e-design film at the moment. Everybody knows it, the Jelly Baby. Uh, the, company, the German company Haribo uh, gets emails that the red ones are the best ones. In blind tests, always the white ones win. It's very important to have acoustics within food. So what you hear uh, tells you, is the food fresh? Uh, is it full of nutrition? So there are sound techni technicians, sound designers just for food stuff, just for cookies and so on. Okay, just for the explanation of how shapes come up, there are also, of course, some products that appear because there's another product already existing. So the toast, for example, it's much older, it's from the Renaissance. And then in the 50s, they also produced the, the ham and the cheese just to make a kind of uh, what is it, system. A that Lego. You, a kind of Lego system, so you can put it together. The same system you can also have for crackers nowadays. Another cultural part, this is quite important, because we have so many uh, food objects which are 
very much symbolic. So the pretzel, for example, I mean, okay, it's a German bread, but what, what is, where's the shape coming from? We didn't pray always like that. Till six, seven hundred after Christ, people prayed like this. And now think about the pretzel. It was a praying, a praying bread. And of course, the sharing part is very important. Uh, you would never share a cake like that and a bread like this. It's quite interesting. Why not? It's because that one is a celebration thing and that one is a daily thing, which is quite interesting because in Christian religion, everybody is talking about this as a very religious, very, very celebration uh, food piece. I think the first big thing is that what we notice all, already many times is to convince people that food is a design issue and that is something positive because many people think that designed food is something negative, but our notion of food design is that any food is designed, because whenever you make a food, you have to decide about a certain how to serve it, how to chop it, how to peel it, and all that. I mean, what designers should do is, on one hand, connect production topics with uh, design topics, and at least with eating habits. We can develop a product, finally, and we can bring processes together.